Fora TV. The world is thinking. Framing is the most ordinary thing you do. You think in terms of structured scrolled frames, and let me tell you just a bit about it. Uh, the work on this was done in the mid-1970s, 1974 uh, frame analysis by Irving Goffman came out, 1975, the linguistic work of Charles Fillmore. Goffman looked at institutions and studied them by actually working in them. He worked in an insane asylum and in Las Vegas as a croupier uh, in order to study them. Uh, you know, very serious research. Uh, you know, had to go to Las Vegas, very scholarly. Now, what he, what, uh, he discovered was this. Every institution is structured by a frame, and it has two parts. Uh, for roles or frame elements, for example, take a hospital. You have doctors, patients, nurses, orderlies, receptionists, uh, instruments like scalpels, places like operating rooms. Those are the frame elements. Then there are scenarios. What happens in this frame? So you know that surgeons operate on patients with scalpels in operating rooms, right? And lots of other things happen in the frame. So that is what a frame is. And you know the boundaries. For example, you walk into the hospital to visit a friend. You go to the reception desk. There's a doctor lying there. They hand you a scalpel, and they say, you're operating on this doctor. It doesn't fit the frame. <laughs> and you know it doesn't. Okay? That is called breaking the frame. It's outside of it. You think in terms of those frames, and they are physically realized in the neural circuitry of your brain. And one of the things that uh, my colleague Jerry Feldman and his students at Berkeley have done is figure out the kind of neural computation needed to characterize frames. And it's actually pretty simple. There's a reason why we think in this way. Now, um, the uh, uh, other great result about frames is Charles Fillmore's. He's a member of my of linguistics department, now retired, one of the great linguists in the world. He figured out that every word in every language is defined relative to a frame. Every word, like surgeon, or scalpel, or a menu for a restaurant, and so on. You understand it in terms of a structure like that. So this is normal. Frames are the most normal things in the world, and we'll see in a minute that they are thoroughly political. Then there's metaphor, and I'll tell you just briefly about that, because that is also thoroughly political. Uh, let's take a non-political example. Take um, more is up and less is down, right? Or he's a warm person or a cold person. It's not just the language. You actually think in terms of those metaphors. You know, uh, prices are going through the roof, not prices are going through the roof, not prices are going through the roof, down, right? More is up. Now, why is that? Well, we learned, first of all, that this is not just true here, but in many cultures around the world. And not only that, it's tr many things like that. There are hundreds of such metaphors that are true around the world. And they're learned very early, and you don't know that you've learned them. How did you learn them? Well, it goes like this. Suppose you're a little kid, a baby. You watch your mother pouring for formula into the bottle or water into a glass over and over every day. What's going on in your brain? Two parts of your brain are activated, one for quantity, one for verticality, and they're activated over and over and over, day after day, because the, the level always goes up. Or you're held as a child, and uh, you feel affection and warmth together over and over, and that means your brain is activated in two places. One for affection, and one for warmth, temperature in different parts of the brain. What happens is when they're activated over and over, the activation starts to spread. The more they're activated, the stronger it gets. The more they spread, the stronger it gets. The more they spread until they find the shortest path between them and form a circuit. And that circuit is the metaphor. More is up or affection is warmth. These metaphors, called primary metaphors, are physical. They're part of your physical brain. And by the time you're six or seven, you have learned hundreds, 